compensation of that. If we had a similar thing that we had now for, uh, I don't even try to pronounce Karnataka in, in, in the right way, but uh, if we had a similar case in Europe, uh, a European Union case example for the utilization or the commercialization of public sector information, it would be a lot easier to convey the message within the private sector itself. And, and, and maybe this is something that we can, we can discuss as well. So a clear case of a business model that will convince the business leaders as well. But I guess I will end in there in, in the interest of time for the last presentation and, and we can have more discussion in the panel. Thank you. Do, do we have one quick question from anybody before we move on to uh, Dr. Govind? Okay, so Dr. Govind, he is Director of the Department of Information Technology in the Ministry of Communications and Information Technology of India. Dr. Govind, thank you. Thank you. At the outset, I would like to give Graham uh, Vickery for giving me an opportunity to talk in this forum. This is a very important uh, topic which they have uh, OECD best practices for the information, uh, internet ba access based information and uh, uh, availability of public sector information, government information. As you are aware that IGF, the entire IGF context, this information is the key. Information is money, information is empowerment. So what my colleague Mr. Rajiv Chawla talked about was the one aspect of the land record, which is a very key issue in the Karnataka and other parts of the country. But I will talk about the overview of the government initiatives in the area of information, how the information government is looking to empowering the citizen through various acts, various means, various initiatives which we have taken over the last one, ten years. In this context, I would like to say that uh, the basic information, apart from the technological challenges in this country, was started by National Informatics Center way back to 20 years back, when the every ministry of the government was given a computerization of the records, computerization of the data. Because the first thing was, before the computers, there were no, data were there in the papers and the registers, the files. So first thing was started by the government to setting up this inf national informatics center to enable the every government, every department, every ministry to look at the data, capture the data, put it in the certain format so that any time any information is needed, not only to the public, but even to use themselves, this data will be utilized in a more structured and more organized way. Coming, moving forward in that direction, today we, we can say that uh, the, this process which started 20 years back by the National Informatics Center is giving very good results in terms of facilitation of the various decision-making process within the government and outside like uh, the how the various schemes, various projects are working apart from the data which is there in the, in the ministry and how this data is going to be utilized for the public use because information is one of the public use uh, thing which has to be there in the various uh, forms. And in this context, I would like to say that uh, the government has came out with a very challenging, uh, came out with the landmark uh, legislation, Right to Information Act 2005, which gave the citizen power to the, uh, the uh, to receive any kind of information they seek from the government departments and which is at a very nominal cost just to apply for that information in any any government department, any ministry, they want anything on the say, uh, tender data or any information on certain projects, any information on appointments, any information on the certain decision which was taken. So I'm glad to say that this Right to Information Act, which is giving a, a very good way to move forward in the availability of the public sector information in, and say, empowering the citizen to get this information and that backward it is allowing the government to put the records in a straightened way. As Mr. Rajiv Chawla said, the more information and putting it in the transparent way gives, uh, reduces the corruption in the departments. 
because once you are know that your information or your decision is going to be public or you are likely to be required to be given this information so that automatically the whole thing moves in a in a transparent in a more structured and more disciplined way which otherwise would have taken years to get the information or some kind of uh, inquiries or those kind of things third thing is ki the government has embarked upon a very a massive national e government plan under which the negp which we call it where the entire country has been uh, g2c services government to citizen services which has the three components one is the state data center where every state capital is having the all information whether it is the land record transport roads the education institutions the industries all informations are put in a very structured and very secure way then uh, second component is the state wide area network where the connectivity because un without the access sorry <coughs> this without the access you cannot access this uh, data so there has to be a wide networking within the depart within the state with the block headquarters and the and the panchayats and the capitals and third is the uh, community service centers unless the community the citizens or the rural folks are able to access these information so we have created 100000 city uh, community service centers for the 6 lakh villages in the country out of which uh, presently 20000 uh, kiosks information kiosks have been set up and another uh, rest of them is likely to be over by next december so this way we are seeing that how the information is seamlessly going to be provided and what are the connectivity mechanism because unless you are connected you can even if you have information nobody can access those information nobody can get these informations and the other thing is ki even the parliament today the parliament informations whether what are the questions have been asked by the parliamentary mps and the ministers all of those things are real time captured and they are put in the parliamentary records and this is publicly available to the uh, citizens and the ministries ministry datas are all available in the planning commission data where uh, what are the five year plans how they are going to be executed uh, phase wise whether it is in the <coughs> coal ministry whether it is urban development whether it is any all the schemes every ministry has having a website which provides all kinds of informations which the government has taken from time to time and how these informations are updated they are also there then we have a uh, in the context of the connectivity we have a cvc guidelines that you know uh, even if you are you are bound to give the tender document tender informations which are there in the public domain how to uh, you are mandated to provide the information to the public before you open any tender and that is a mandatory by cbc unless you if you are not given the public information the your tender will be invalid so this way all the information which government is giving is given to a public and uh, giving to the public uh, to g2c models or any other website based information then we have a uh, challenges also in this country like uh, the as you are aware in the vast country 30 states and union territories and then the how the access mechanism access is a big challenge as we talked about yesterday also how to reach to the next billion and even the last billion so the access unless you have a, a good access to the every citizen how you are going to get the information so that way information is going to be very key and access is the that's why the current theme of the igf is the internet for all which we have uh, uh, positioned here here in the IG of 2008 and the in the access mechanism where we have uh, we have a 5 million uh, broadband connections now and we are going to 20 million by 2010 and the we are making all technologies like wimax wifi and the 3g spectrum the which we are going to provide to technology based access mechanism so that the citizens or the kiosk can be enabled to get the access for the information the second thing is ki the mobile revolution with our friend nokia all know they we are creating 8 uh, 8 million mobile subscribers every month which is the no finland population so that way the mobile is the we have reached more than 300 million and the the idea is to get it to the say uh, 500 million by 2010 
And this mobile revolution has already created the information gap between the various people and how you get the information, SMSing the information. So mo anytime, any, most of the government information and the collection, the dissemination is done through the mobile and the other technologies. And the mobile internet, when the, your connectivity is an issue like the computer is a problem in the country like ours, where the cost of computer access, uh, the device is very costly, unlike the mobile. So we are seeing how the mobile can be empowered to get a mobile internet. Because that's a device, even if you get your uh, information through the mobile, then you can enable a vast uh, population of the country uh, um, information enabled which you cannot do with the computers and laptops, which is cost is probably high for this country like ours. So we are seeing how the mobile internet is going to see that information revolution and information enablement, access to the information, and the availability of public sector information. And then the other challenge is the content, the content in the local languages. As you are aware, we have a 22 official languages in the country, uh, but most of the information is in English. How to, even if you have a uh, device, you, even if you have access, unless you have a challenge of enabling the, the availability of those informations in the local language. Because the citizen and the farmers and the person living in the remote areas, they are, not, they are not aware of the English content. And even if uh, you provide them the thing, they cannot uh, use that kind of information. So the other challenge is how we, the one of the subject topic here is the multilingual internet, which we are uh, looking into it, ki how the local content, the, the inter in this aspect, I will say like the websites, even if the website you know that my, the uh, Karnataka dot in, so Karnataka dot in is even is in, is in English and the fellow doesn't know the English, how will you access that kind of website? So we are seeing that how the domain names can be put in the local languages, like Karnataka written in the Kannad language or uh, Punjab, like in Punjabi language. So that, that is a challenge here, that we are working with the ICANN, Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers, so that the top level domains, like .com, .in, country code top level domains, they can be worked in the, and they can be put in, in the local languages, and the content can be, although the contents are there in the local languages, but the website address is still in English, because that is in the root server, it is still understands only the A to Z and the English alphabets. So unless we enable the, the global root servers to understand the, the local script and the local languages, we will not be able to move forward in the, uh, the localization of the content, localization of the website. Then the other kind of challenges in the information availability is the what kind of information citizens has to be trained. There has to be a massive training and awareness program, which is I found is uh, not there in these 13 or 14 points which OECD has given, so that the citizens should know what kind of informations are there, what which information has got what value, how to retrieve those kind of informations. There has to be a good uh, you know training aspect, awareness aspect. Apart from the entrepreneurship, how the some, some gentlemen said the, how the entrepreneurship can be a challenge because how the information has to be taken from the commercialization of the information. But in the government sector, we don't look much in the commercialization of information, but more on the dissemination of information faster in, a, in the lowest available money and even in the free of cost. So that way we have seen the government of India has embarked upon a massive program of uh, accessing providing access to the citizens, providing G2C services, and the content availability and in the other kind of uh, things in the local form, so that the information, uh, the all the public sector information, the government information is readily available to the public, the citizens, in a most cost-effective and the easy manner. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you very much, Dr. Govin, for a, an overview of, of what the government is doing and what the government needs to do in terms of improve, particularly improving access and trying to make sure that content, including government sector, public sector content, is available. I would propose now, are there any questions directly to Dr. Govin um, or general questions to the whole panel? Yes, I can. Yes, please. Um, I think there's a roaming microphone which might help. Um, uh -huh. I'm Priyanti Daluatta from Sri Lanka. 
and I am here as an ISOC ambassador. I am working for the University Grants Commission in Sri Lanka. I would like to know, uh, like you had mentioned about the land record, so is it, uh, one question is whether is it in the local language or whether it is in English. And the other thing is you mentioned about the different telecenters. So like are there different projects, I mean different initiatives or whether it is by the government initiative and like I mean whether the cost would differ. Like I mean if, in, if within the same state if one particular telecenter is offering the service Will it be the same uh, as compared to another telecenter project which is which is offering the same service? Uh, whether it is going by the same cost? Thank you. Uh, the uh, the appli the land records are obviously in local language. They are in the uh, every state has a different language, and there is a language called Kannada for Karnataka it's in that language. So the land records on the web. As far as even the land records which are available from the village. Uh, from the government centers are all in the local language. You see, we have two type of centers. Government also runs their center, while the public-private partner, those thousand centers also run these services. This obviously is important because nobody should have monopoly. And you should always have a fight between the government centers and the private centers. Private centers should not also take you for a ride and create a situation where they create a monopoly in their favor. Second thing is that the services are same costed, whichever center you go to, whether you come to the government center, in which case he has to travel 30-40 kilometers, or at the village office where he perhaps has to travel 4-5 kilometers, the services cost the same. Do we have other, other questions? We have another 10 minutes if we need to. Um, I think it's fascinating. We're not thinking about the situation in Europe and the situation in India. I mean, the language diversity and the cultural diversity and just the problem of, of access. Uh, in some ways, the scale is very is very similar, um, in the sense that you know you have all these different languages trying to work out some way, some modus vivendi, and trying to get some sort of common factor across them. The questions or comments? Yes, please. I want to ask, uh, are there any uh, standards uh, for uh, maintaining uh, 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 public sector websites? Uh, one from the technology standards and other is from the, the content standards. Uh, 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 like if I uh, uh, see the example of India, there are hundreds of uh, websites of uh, various Indian government organizations. And uh, as Dr. Govind mentioned about, like uh, everyone is trying to provide a lot of information. But but every like website is designed in a very very different way. Different technologies applied in the back end. Interfaces are different. And uh, so, uh, as a common the citizen, uh, not that many people t t t find uh, many of the websites very very interesting or accessible and stuff. So, is there a uh, broader OECD or any other organization like uh, trying to uh, um, uh, create awareness about like maintaining? Uh, uniformity standards and stuff uh, both in terms of content and uh, technology yeah well I'll, I'll just give a quick answer and then I'll turn it over to the panel I think this is a question for all of the panelists um, in particular but for example um, a lot of work has been done at OECD on e-government um, issues and of course one of the big issues is exactly the same same thing that most governments have a myriad of websites which they're trying to rationalize in some way and at least trying to work out sort of common portals and common approaches and common interoperability of you know the, the, the back end uh, but it's a big it's a big and continuing challenge because the one-stop shop type ideas for um, countries um, that be, although they're a good idea and they're great in, in principle a lot of them have not worked all that well for, ver for various reasons simply because people are not quite sure how to go through the, the centralized portal to the thing that they're really interested in and that's that's quite a problem but would anybody here like to, to follow up I hope you, this works now, I'll take a little bit closer. Uh, <clears throat> in the case of Finland, for instance, uh, in, even in, in a small country like us, we have five million people, we have three different national languages. Uh, so Finnish, Swedish, and, and Sami, which is spoken in the upper north of the country, and every information needs to be translated to all, all of those three. 
Uh, so, but basically, when when you think about the technology standards and say content type of standards in in, in there, the main issue uh, when I underline the different challenges uh, has been the fact that yes, in different provinces and the local authorities have always used a different systems integrator. So you have all different type of systems, different type of technology platforms that are not interoperable as such. And what we have. Uh, advise the Finnish government to do is to, to really come up with a kind of a common concentrated ICT policy uh, technology wise that, that would be in, in place and they have recently during the past two years started to putting together all these different piecemeal solutions so that it, it truly becomes a national platform. Uh, but uh, that's still work under progress. Dr. Gotham, please. Thank you. Uh, one challenge in the standardization, I understand, is you know, then you know, you have a put it that standard to every state government and every central government, and the, in the central government, the every department has its own contours and its own priorities in the what kind of information and content they want to put. There can be a technological challenge like Web 2 kind of thing, okay, what way you design the website, that, that can be there. But what kind of contentization or content standard, maybe the essentials of that particular thing can be there. But I believe that e-governance group is having a standard portals they are making for the e-government service, the G2C services. But we have left the the development of portals to the not. We don't want to say that you adopt this standard or that standard. Some may go open standard, open software. Some may go the Windows kind of thing. Some may go. It's depending on the cost and so many other factors. Every ministry will not like to you know, or the central government will not say you go for this standard. Because this is the most, and then again, it will be controversial. You know, if you say open, then why they will say why not go to the other one? So I think these things uh, bring to the thing that you know, there can be a, a technological uh, way to make a website, but uh, how to containerization and what way you put things there? I don't know whether there can be any standard on that form. While uh, one talks about the way websites are to be done, but at the back end, put those processes in place which, which automatically ensure that the websites are updated. So more than the look and feel of the services, what is important is that I have databases which drive these websites irrespective of the fact whether they look like or not. I mean, citizens will cry and learn how to access, <laughs> but at least there should be data in public domain. I mean, there's no point having uniform applications. I mean, I'm saying it's not the priority because the more important is that your backend databases, your processes should be in place. That's something which is, I mean, as a process updation, every time you issue a government order, do I issue through a process that that, that government order automatically gets published to the website? More than whether it is in a PDF form or it's in doc form, is all secondary for people. Fortunately, the panel cannot see the sign which has just gone up on the on the screen there, which is lunch <laughs> in bright yellow, almost flashing. We have. I would still say, there's, if anybody has one last burning question, uh, ignore the lunch sign. The lunch will be out there for another hour and a half or so, or an hour at least. So, one last question, so please. Lunch, lunch question. Yeah, yeah, this is the lunch question. <laughs> lunch question. Uh, recently, I was reading about uh, uh, Singapore government uh, going on the Facebook. So it is like uh, uh, trying to use uh, the Facebook as much to like reach out to the citizens and take uh, feedback on its services. Uh, uh, just a curiosity uh, uh, that uh, is uh, such an approach being uh, looked by any other countries, European or otherwise, uh, Web 2.0 uh, approaches. Uh, indeed, yes. Um, it's been uh, realised through the public sector information area that uh, the public sector can't do it all. And it's a mistake if the public sector believes it can. It's too large. And therefore you need to engage much more. And what's um, coming out of uh, Web2 and uh, 
the emerging Web3 uh, technologies is that society is actually participating completely independently of uh, the public sector. And uh, a, a very good example in the UK is what's something called Netmums. It has over four million people using it. They're all mothers. And uh, it's a, a dialogue about, I have a problem this morning, I've woken up, my child has this symptom or that symptom, and the, the various mothers start to contribute, and within four hours maximum, they have solutions. This outstrips vastly the UK's National Health Service equivalent service. So the, recently the UK Government Cabinet Office, and it's well worth having a look at, have actually just provided some very short principles, five I think there are, um, probably not more than a hundred words in total, and what it enables is public servants to interact on civil society um, websites, blogs and that sort of thing legitimately because up to now it's not been the right thing to do for a public sector person to in fact engage in those sort of debates. And what can they actually provide? Well they can look at the dialogue and say well actually um, that's not quite right and they can correct it from the perspective of the state. And so um, this is opening up. The United States has currently followed um, the same course. And if you look at the United States one, it's five pages long. So I would suggest that's not so uh, easy for public servants to use. But in, this, in itself, of course, this is a, an opening up and a liberalization um, and an awareness that um, to deliver these services, all of society has to work together. Any comments from my right? The social networking side, particularly. Thank you. I think this is a good question, like uh, Ravi has raised, regarding the uh, is this is a kind of Facebook or anything? It's a kind of uh, engaging the public in the decision making process or in the policy development process. So I think it's a consultation process which has to be brought into the governmental decisions. And I understand that in some of the ministries there is a consultation consultation ministry. And in fact, there is all in the all the ministries is having a public phase where the MPs and the government officials meet to address some of the issues which has been taken, and that in gets uh, enshrined in the public policies which are made in the government. Like IT Act, it is put on the website to have a feedback from the public what kind of you know issues you feel has to be there. Or in the Telecom Regulatory Authority has a consultation which consults on various issues of the spectrum, the, the IPv4 and 6 uh, issues and so many other things. So similarly other ministries may not be having a technological kind of uh, face for the, this kind of thing, but there is a process face-to-face uh, -face meetings and the process where the consultative process is there to to know the public mood on certain issues and how to get embedded in the in the public policy making formulation in the government and the vice versa. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. The, the audience has decided to take notice of the sign there and go to lunch. But I'd like to just thank all of, all of the people on, on the panel particularly. I thought it was very interesting and uh, I learned, learned a lot. Thank you. And if you have suggestions for our um, 13 points, we're now up to, up to 15, but if you have other, set, other suggestions on how we might think about uh, when we review these principles and how they're, they're used, we'd love to hear this at OECD.